it kind of helped him advance. I mean, do you think this was a conspiracy? You gotta go with Jacob Butter. You gotta go left. <laughs> no, we're talking, about, we're talking about the players. That's tournament champion to the podcast. There he is, right oh, there. Oh, he doesn't even know how to watch. Go to YouTube.com and search <laughs> Down Lane Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Downline Podcast. We are coming live from the lab at Town & Country Lanes. I'm your host, Kyle Haynes, and with me is the assistant to the host, Anthony Skacia. It's great to be here today. <laughs> um, do I sound okay, Austin? I know you guys don't like when I lean too far in. You can lean in as far as you want now. We have audio fixed. With us is the producer, Austin Van Buren. And live in the shop tonight, we've got Rookie of the Year nominee, Andrew Hall. Welcome. Thanks for having me on, guys. How you doing? How we doing? We are good. We We are good. we got a lot to talk about tonight. We are going to be uh, talking about and uh, giving our uh, thoughts, debating uh, Player of the Year, who we think should uh, take home that trophy. It's an easy one. I can't wait to debate it. (laughs) going to say i have many thoughts on that one um we're going to talk about we've got a couple of new champions uh in the room from uh, the this past uh tournament this weekend uh here at town and country um so we'll talk about that a little bit uh let's see and then we're going to uh, ask andrew uh what uh is going to be going on for this upcoming pba season as he heads out on tour High hopes and dreams. That's all it is. <laughs> High hopes and dreams. Um, but before all of that, please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell to get alerts from the channel, share with your friends, all that good stuff. If you can't watch on the YouTube, you can always download and mm-hmm. listen via your favorite podcast service. While you're doing that, give us a five star review, all of that good stuff. And we want to give a quick shout out to Bingham's Bowling Supply. They put out an awesome shout out on their website. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, he's a big fan of ours. So thanks so much, Grant Bingham. So this weekend, we all bowled in. Well, everybody except Anthony because he ran it. But <laughs> it's just kind of Play par list. for the course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Anything that's know. here. Uh, it's just, you know. I find myself thanking Anthony for like multiple things, multiple times a week, like, just for some things that he's done throughout the bowling center as a host. Thank you. <laughs> he probably did it. Listen, he's got to gotta walk out the door, so we're, we can't make it any bigger. I know. Let's let's put the air pump yeah. away. Let's put the air pump away. Yeah, that's right. No, we we could make it bigger. I mean, we, we totally can. <laughs> if you really it, like it. It's been a big couple of weeks, you know. So we don't want to we don't want to have to have him always use he's the front door. Down. Yeah, the front door is the double door here, so that's the only one he can use. That's funny because ever since I won that tournament, I've been going in that door for some reason. <laughs> no coincidence. Um, but yeah, this weekend was the Swiss Trios, which is probably uh, one of the most fun tournaments to bowl in, I would have to say. Last year was the first time uh, having it here at Town & Country and probably, I don't know, one of the only ones in the Northeast, maybe. Uh, I do Coast. know uh, there are more on the West Coast, but I yeah. know that there are a few other, Andrew and I talked about it, other uh, organizations that run it, maybe one or two more I, that I know of. Um, he might know more than I do. But in this yeah, area, it's, in this area, it's the only in one. This region, yeah, in this region, yeah. There was uh, Semba, uh, the seniors New England tournament series. They run one, um, an over fifty, an over sixty, and an under. And then okay. so it's the three age divisions that have that make up the Swiss. Gotcha. Uh, another one that was ran, or it was tried to be, low entries though. Uh, it was down in New Jersey and. Same deal, no no average cap, no nothing, just the best bowlers. They had guys like Prather come up, Mackie came and bowled. Like no one bowled because so like there were so yeah. many powerhouse teams. Like John, I think John Fury, Anthony Pepe, and Joe Paluzak, that team won the tournament. Like Yikes. no shortage Look of out. talent there. Yeah. yeah. So that to me is the most fun format to do Swiss, right. just because it's always on top and it's always on pace. The only I'd say downside to it and the only topic for discussion is how you do the rounds each time because position around each game right. it can create some easy separation throughout the field that's the only topic you could really debate about it but swiss is my favorite format for sure yeah it was it, like it's American. definitely fun <laughs> um last year yeah. last year you had 16 entries this year 14 14 get it right 14 sorry Don't so freaking... even better last year you had 14 that's and then exactly. 10 that's more to uh to fill the house this year at 24 <clears> so um, I think people really find it to be enjoyable and it's, it's different, a lot of fun. exciting. Uh, talk about separation. Maybe in more games, there's more separation. Um, because past years, at least that we've had it, 
um, obviously uh, your team, Austin and Andrew's team, were you guys weren't well above Philly. You were two points above, I think, second or so. The other teams, I think, uh, Kyle, you jumped up like four spots last game. So for us, just doing the six games, because I can only have 24 teams, it seems to be okay normally. Yeah, you know, think, we haven't seen anything too bad. three games, we went like three or four, four and five. Or yeah. Something to that effect. And so, yeah, we were able to jump up a whole bunch of positions into a yeah. cashing spot. Yeah. It wasn't, it's not too bad. Uh, I was saying about making it like another game next year, just because then I could do brackets one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead of having that third game crossover, if you bowl bad, you're out. See ya. Yeah, you came for, in second and you're out. Yeah. You could so, call that a nitpicky thing, but yeah. still. Like, <laughs> that is nitpicky. Yeah. Well, I knit and I picked. You, yeah. and you, <laughs> yes. do both. you do both. You have to nitpick those events, especially when you have 24 teams because the support is good. You appreciate everybody coming out. So you just want to give another better event the next year just to make it so people are yeah. coming back. Like, yeah, he, you know, we did this. We changed a little bit. Um, I think the 660 cap is perfect. Oh yeah, because there is plenty of people of all different skill levels, and you can't just run away with it. Yeah, um, which is nice. It evens so, the field out completely. Like, yeah, I mean, I think uh, we should uh, re-rate for next year the the team that won, or at least uh, <laughs> average check the team for sure. Double but check. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 so, right. So, so you the average me check. I got a sandbag. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I'm check. already working on it because my average is freaking. Interestingly like enough, I did check. Uh, the averages after the event was over. Um, obviously, no team was over like 650. I think Nick Harris's team was the highest at like 655, maybe. That was the only team. The guys who won, uh, you guys, obviously, uh, we'll get to that, but they, Andrew was the only guy over 200. 200. Average. That average 200 on the day. Over yeah. Oh, you were 227 oh, or 228. Austin awesome was 198, and then uh, your girlfriend Haley was like 193. So yeah. it's not like it was unattainable by any means. Just about getting that point and being just good enough right? Uh, to win 4-1. I think you guys won 4-1 every game. So Yeah, yeah we 4-1 every game, I believe. Maybe one game you won 5 out, but I can't no. remember. Kind of a um, testament to the 660 cap, in my opinion. I think that this 220 a game is the new standard. In my yeah. opinion, for as opposed to you know two ten or two hundred, I think in today's day six sixty is a great number. <clears throat> but yeah. talk about nitpicky. I mean, we were talking about the finals format for what like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, just yeah. For, like just that one game, in, yeah. let alone. And- I, it's it's a definitely a tough one because I want to do more, but we're there all day. Yeah. Like we got done at like four o'clock. You're there at ten. I mean, you said start early. I said I don't wake up that early. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm in the minority of not minding being in a bowling center for a long day for a long day on Sunday. I know that's not a popular mindset. Right. I've been to quick tournaments and people are thrilled to be leaving at like two yeah. thirty. Yeah, they love it. So it goes either bad. way. Yeah, it's not bad. But I think next year we're gonna do two games, like you said, uh, one game in the left lane, one game in the right lane, and just do total total pins Baker format, because um, then it's still team based. Uh, we'll we'll definitely take a look at it as we get closer. But that was kind of the general consensus that we we did chat about. So we'll see what happens. I and mean, it'll be interesting and uh we'll hopefully fill it up next year. We had 105 brackets, 106 brackets on the day. That was nice. Um which is definitely nice. It was to nice have. for Chris Smith, that's for sure. Yeah, I and mean, <laughs> trust me, there's a few guys who made out pretty good yeah. that day. And uh and then with that money, we also took some of that money and then paid out an MVP which was most points earned and high average and then Chris Smith won all of his matches with a 235 average. That's so, a unique one. I haven't um, seen that in any other Swiss event. So yeah, that's cool. Like an MVP, so, it was just something different to try to give that. you guys a shoot for. Um now could I have done it off of the teams that made the playoffs? Yeah, but then at the same time, you know, if they're bowling good all day and they're in the playoffs, they're getting paid a little bit more, so you might as well try to give it to somebody else, you know, if if that top person wasn't there. So that way you can give spread it out spread, spread it around a little spread bit. Spread the wealth. Like the butter on the bread. But, uh, you know, something like that. And then that way everybody, you know, has a chance to get some kind of cash back. Yeah. So, and we paid one in three. Yeah. Which you can't, I don't know. Really I wouldn't be. Hard mad. to beat that. Really yeah. hard to beat that. Yeah, you got your What's money up, back. What's up, Carl? Least. Welcome back. We got the to Brit, see Carl two, uh, two weeks ago. That was that was good to see. Lefty and he has baby. hair now. Lefty I know. I saw Carl wow. has hair. He took his hat <laughs> off. And I'm like, Carl, why are you wearing a hat? I can see your hair now. I know. Wow. I know. Well, it's what happens when you double Carl. take. Absolutely. I do want to say, Carl, I'm sorry. I didn't say goodbye to you two weeks ago. You were upset. Um, on the I, I left. I ran out of the bowling alley. Not only did I not say goodbye to you, Carl, I left my entire bag, my accessories bag, in Chicopee. <laughs> so if anybody from Chicopee is uh, listening, uh, there is a trifold gray uh, accessories bag uh, laying around somewhere. Whoops. I'm pretty sure it's still there. 
Um, it looks like he's his travel case with his hair. Yeah, you should have asked me. I, was, I picked up Haley's wrist guard that she left there two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> she left it there. That stuff go, goes there to die, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, that, that place. Just kidding. Fantastic facility. Sorry to cut you off there. No, 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 no worries. No worries. So, uh, yeah, um, if somebody just wants to pick that up, bring it back to Albany, that'd be great. Could UPS it? Yes, uh, but I believe I... I believe somebody is driving home from Massachusetts for Christmas. It so will be it cheaper may, just to buy new stuff. Um, True. <laughs> or I'll, I'll get it back. I'll get it back. Um, but anyway, good to see you again, Carl. And I apologize for not saying bye. And uh, same to Sarah, too. Um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, congratulations, guys, on uh, taking home the uh, Swiss Trio trophy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's get into uh, Player of the Year, shall we? And uh, oh, by the way, congratulations! I think we said it already on the uh, the Rookie of the Year nomination. Yeah, thank the, you very uh, much. It was the, fortunate the, to be included. In yeah, this for sure. Um, the nomination or not the nomination? The announcement was made today. Um, uh, I'm already forgetting it. Cortez uh, Shane. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Cortez. Man, he had a heck of a season. He bowled well. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit, like, uh, what does that even? mean or feel like to you as far as i know it's a, probably a stupid question i think we all no, no. kind of know what it feels like or what it could possibly feel like but like that has to be a pretty awesome honor feeling whatever to For even sure. be bestowed that uh, nomination oh absolutely i mean from growing up watching the pba my whole life it's something that it's almost surreal to be a part of it now to where i grew up watching it, it seems unreal to where it's this whole kind of Candyland thing in my world and now i'm part of it and to even be included in that, in that group of names was very, very humbling and very, very honoring. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. Like I said, um, Nolan, their media guy, asked me on a, for a headshot on Thursday before they made the announcement. I took it right out there behind 17 and 18, and there I was on the web, on the Facebook page like two days later. I didn't even ask. He just asked me to do it. So, no, it's it's super humbling and honoring. And I <laughs> 17, 18 is now in the PBA. Oh, they cut the background. Yeah, yeah. they did. Oh, yeah, they cut it man. out. No, just just this guy. Just this circle. Ed here. Sheeran made it on the page. Not Ed Sheeran. Hey, not, Ed at, Sheeran. not Ed Sheeran. At not Ed Sheeran. I know. <laughs> Tough to tell which ones because I had one that got hacked and then I had to make a new one. So not Oh, Ed wait. Sheeran, so have I been tagging the hacked one? Yeah. Uh, Andrew H. All 17 mm, is hacked. Yeah. It's okay. I, you know what? Now now is better than never. Come to on, find out. I did. Uh, I did read that today as noted Sheeran. Noted Sheeran. <laughs> I, not Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Then yeah. Kyle, oh, said, Kyle said, yeah. not Ed Sheeran. And I said, uh, well, that, that makes, makes a lot echo. of sense. Now, I'm, now the wheels are turning. Um, I don't read well. Yeah. I, no, I I'm right well. there with you. Uh, I, I bowl well. I don't read okay, well. Yeah, we, read. We, we bowl well. That's, what That's we debatable. That's what I mean, you bowl well. well. I don't do either. It's hey, okay. That's also debatable. Bowlers bowl. Bowlers, Bowlers bowl, though. That's right. That's, we can agree. Bowlers, Bowlers bowl. Right. No, I, I got, look, back to it. I mean, it was a huge honor, and it was humble. I was very pleased with my season, personally. I know I wasn't the highest in all the stats, but – Making it, making it through a couple PTQs and especially one of the harder PTQs they had was kind of a big sense of validation for me. I mean, it was I was nervous going out there, especially making a change with my left arm two months before the season started. I didn't know if I was going to have enough time to really hash it out. I did, luckily, um, for those events. I hurt myself at the U.S. Open, so I missed a few of the smaller events. But other than that, um, I would have liked to have one event back. The World Series PTQ went horribly. But other than that, I, I think it was all great experience and – I can't wait to apply next year, man. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, you would only be human if uh, you didn't feel a little nervous. Going oh, there, dude, but, uh, <laughs> wouldn't be human if uh, you didn't feel a little nervous. Going I, they should have hooked up a, a heart rate monitor to me. I would have loved to see it like throughout, especially the first block of my career. Like yeah. I would have loved to see how fast my heart was beating oh, for the God. first like game five frames. Oh, yeah. But either Maybe way, yeah. some uh, pure shots, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Like the, the my legs have never been deeper. Like my, my knee bend has never been deeper. <laughs> But yeah. Um, so what does that mean going out this year? You're still going to have to go PTQs? Or yeah. You, so yeah. yeah, the the top 50 that were um, from last year's season and, and the points is how they determined it. Um, I was like 96 or something. It's just, it's very difficult as a non-exempt pro to get into that non-exempt or to get into that exempt group yeah. just because of the PTQs. So they're a little bit different this year. Last year they had well, close to hundred entries per, maybe not all of them, but they let a lot of bowlers bowl. This time around, they're capping them all at 64. So, they're, yeah, they're, they're capping the entries, and they're doing it. They're still taking eight. So I guess the ratio is better. But it's still eight spots for 64 guys, which is very tough. You know, low yeah. ratio. It's, you know, 
But, Stupid. Yeah, I Let's mean... Let's cap the field, and then we'll cap the PTQ if You're people want right. to get it. Yeah. So, hey, players, you want more money? I guess, I don't know, find a way to get more sponsors instead of letting the donators donate. Not in a bad way. Listen, everybody's you know not going to make it, but to actually support these guys on tour, why aren't we having bigger fields? We've talked about it before. We're not going to get into it, <laughs> but it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, listen, I get, it's, I get that it's not an open turn. It's not an open tournament. It's, a, it's supposed to be professionals. It's supposed to be the, the top tier or whatever. But you've got to figure out a way. And I, I thought or I was under the impression that they were making changes this year. Well, they did. But I thought it was supposed to be more open. But um, you got to figure out a way to get the guys that are excelling in the regionals or excelling in the PTQs to get them – to be uh yeah that, that getting was onto the the, the the tour the the into the weekly um field that, yeah that's a common thought i mean i think they need to utilize the rpi way more than they are in my opinion um you just make the make the regional tour important again like mm-hmm. the tournaments themselves don't get a huge amount of entries each time like a select few sell out i think like one or two in the east coast do maybe other regions are a little bit different i don't pay a whole lot of attention but yeah utilizing the regional tour to get that make it more of a gateway than it already is granted it's the it's the literal step down so you can do it as a gateway but to make it really feel like it right is a whole different conversation it, it, yeah. it doesn't feel like it at the well moment, i mean there's there, no utilization right there's there's no there is no uh threshold there's there's no this is how many points you need to make it mm-hmm. to the tour this is a good idea there's no point number it's just like there is to get to the RPI. That's great, mm-hmm. right? But uh, they well, made it like fifteen hundred points. It's not a, is it a threshold or is it a top number? It's it's well it's, it's top uh, so the top, top seven uh, in right. points and then three from the RPI tournament itself. Right, so, so it's ten total. But uh, so yeah, but it's not uh, uh, it's a number of from the the region that gets to go to RPI. Correct. But Correct. Uh, there's no num- uh, point value. But if there were at least uh, the if there was a one in whatever from your region that said you you need to make this many t- stops in your region oh yeah like and, criteria to make it to, to, to uh go. right and um uh the top however many guys people get to make the the exempt field or whatever for sure in, in the national tour yeah i just think like those types of formats to me are the best ones but the only thing that i run into with them is they're always it's tough to determine the final amount of bowlers that get through if it's a criteria so the bowler is trying to or the, the tour is trying to schedule it in centers that maybe aren't super big when you have a lot of guys get through modif- in addition to the other top 50 and all the main fields turn into like 120 or 130 bowlers yeah talking it out now beforehand i thought it was going to be tough i mean one squad for 120 bowlers it's difficult to find bowlers or uh find centers that big to yep. host that so it's it's we're really locked but for single squads sure but what's your dad say every time back in the day man there was two shifts two shifts but squad equity is just there such we go a huge squad there equity we go. there we go it is the biggest topic of debate right like yeah that's what that's what all the big guys do. No, right. you can get into it a little bit. I yeah. mean, we got a little bit of time. I'm sure we can squeak I mean, in here. We had about Stu your... on the show. That's all they complain about on their show is squad equity, squad equity or inequity. I mean, are you whatever, a squad but... equity guy or are you like, hey, it's bowlers bowl? Right. Or are you like, whoa, this squad A is way better? Or typically the later squads are better because they figure out how to play them and the ball reps kind of get an idea. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm a squad, I'm a squad equity guy when it comes to like if you have an opportunity to have a lot of different squads, i.e. the World Series, mm-hmm. granted that those are not different squads though. They're just different shifts. So I guess right. that's different. But either way, if you have one squad and not enough bowlers or enough bowlers, it shouldn't really matter. But if you can spread it out across two squads, yeah. Like it has to make sense. I'm just trying to talk this out in my head right now because it's okay, because we kind of caught you off guard. Yeah. So no, we'll give you a second to think, but we to, talked what, about what, it. What, think what, about it. What I think you're might be saying and anyway is like if you have just shift a and shift b and that determines a cut i can kind of understand that doesn't sound fun but if you have you know shift a shift b shift b shift a well that kind of spreads it out a little yeah. bit you've you've had a chance to bowl in the morning the afternoon in the afternoon and in the morning i think with enough squads right that's what i'm trying to say yeah. you can have it over enough a games lo- enough games right to okay. even it out thank you enough games that'll probably a tour stop that. over a week should be able to do that 
you would think. A regional is a little tougher because you're usually just bowling over. Yeah, a but weekend, a regional, so. like, yeah. like we've said, regional is kind of the stepping stone. I think it's not as the money is not as big there. Right. So I mean, if you're bowling on the national tour, I feel like it would be. I mean, you would want it. Yes, in a perfect world, we'd want it. But you know, I think at the end of the day, it's not a terrible thing. But We've talked about it a little bit before. Ryan Schaefer said that's why the advancers round or the cashers round was introduced to then have one squad after the two squads mm-hmm. to then even out the field so that all the cashers get together on the same squad and have right. the same opportunity to make up some pins or to you know even out the field a little bit. So like for the regional tour, that was that's that's a rule. That was a yeah, rule. that's a rule. So for us on the east side, we always have a cashers round, and ninety percent of the time. We have one squad, right? Well, so it makes as of, no sense. As of late, the first one we went to out in Buffalo, we had two squads. We, but yes. as of late, yes, they've been getting 50, Just, 60 entries, and there have have only been one. He's bowled more than we have. It's been so about half and half. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. When we started, yeah, yes, but uh, yeah, I'm just saying the last couple they're, they've only had, they only had fifty at that yeah. last one. Yeah. Oh, I know. Island. I think I came forty oh, fifth. Yeah. I think forty fifth was my number. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> not no, last hashtag no. not last but but either way i just think it's in the a good sport, conversation yeah, yeah yeah for sure i just think for the it's just a different conversation when you get to the highest level of the sport because like of course those, those little details it makes a difference so much more like it, at a regular stuff uh, screw squad equity, squad equity who cares just yeah. like it's, throw them on two squads most entries possible i understand it but it also kind of leads into my little thing where pva is a little elitist where they want to keep they want to keep the same names on TV, yeah. and if you want to get on TV, you better earn you better it. Be good. So, like, you need to be able to beat them consistently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's got to take their I spot. I can see that. But I can at, see that. But uh, not, I, not to bring the G word in here. Look at golf. Oh, here you we could, go. You could bowl, yeah. you could bowl. You could bowl. You could play one day, and you could have pristine, sunny, windless conditions, and then windless. or start start at nine a.m. one day, and then you could be the the two p.m. tee off. And it could be sixty mile an hour winds, Dude, right? Austin's over here. It's just funny. What? <laughs> this isn't the seventh time he's brought it up. I'm no, just saying. It's, it's, it's yeah, that is I'm kind just of saying. go to the totally. tea time. You want to talk yeah. about equity? The guy that tees off at nine a.m. may have a beautiful day, and the guy that tees off at two wind picks up a little bit. Could have it is. Exactly. I wonder if they complain about tea time equity. <laughs> Dude, but shut the start. But we gotta you, call Mike Sweeney. I don't. You guys don't know him. He, he's on the Corn Ferry tour. We gotta call him and see if he's got any. Uh, insider info on so, that so i mean the it's only thing i have thing, to say huh? against that is uh one is 1000 percent unpredictable <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other is 1000 percent. i completely agree but did, but you get what you get you get what you get you don't get upset you can predict the weather <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no i just think with the advance around yeah totally i i don't know i mean i listen it could be another conversation for another day but uh just feel like Hey man, you're a professional. You got to bowl 16 games. You should be good enough to figure it out, especially with you know how good those guys really are. I totally agree. You know, uh, instead of complaining about squad equity, just you know figure out the lanes and just be a little bit better. I don't know, maybe. I mean, I, mean, I stink, think, so I don't know. I think they want all of the same, all of the guys together in that upper echelon of players yeah. on one squad to keep it small, so that their transition is a little bit. I don't want to say more predictable. These are like little conspiracies I have in my head. Right. So like, like, well, you got all think. the guys that play in the same spot. Their transition is going to be not like the transition is more work. predictable. It's yeah, much more predictable. Well, you look when they go to the USBC, work, when they go to the masters or something, way more complaints there because you get a field way, of bigger people yeah. and now they don't play them. They don't play them. Right. There. Yeah, totally. And, no, for sure. and, it's, and it's how it is. Yeah. But you know, I like, uh, like they say, cream always rises to the top. Or, or oil and water separate. I don't know what they say. Um, but I, either way, if which those guys are that good, in my opinion. They, they really are great. So they, they should be able to, to figure out. I think that's what that's my main complaint, I guess, on the tour. And I, I'm sure you going out there every week and seeing it, I mean, it's it's you're you're living it. So you kind of have your own kind of thought process on it, which is good. I did I did want to bring that up. So yeah. I don't know who brought it up. Sure. Did well, I you want you wanted to bring it up with AJ. So uh, but we I forgot to t- I, but I now, forgot to ask him because I was a little baby and I just kind of let Kyle <laughs> talk. Um, but this it's, week, it's a little easier in person, you know. You got you got. I'm a better right in here. person yeah. guy. I'm yeah. a better in person guy. Yeah, I mean, sure. all right. Well, we know? took we took uh, exit we took yeah. exit 15 <laughs> yeah. off the highway here, so let's get back on real quick. And Maybe. then if we have more time, we'll uh, we'll talk more. We'll elaborate. For, uh, well, we're going to talk life. about tour life anyway. Yeah. we're going to get into. So, it, so uh, I apologize let's get back, to our viewers. Let's get back on the topic at hand. Uh, player of the year. I'm just going to run down the list real quick, even though we know that I think we're just going to be talking about two people anyway 
Um, but the list of guys that made the uh, the nominee list, we got Belmo, Buttriff, uh, Packy, Kevin McCune, Matt Ogle, Anthony Simonson. Um, hey, me and Matt got to go crappie fishing. That's right. EJ He's got Tackett, a great boat. Kyle Troop. Got a really nice um, boat, yeah. So uh, I assume <laughs> we're just going to be talking about EJ and Simo, right? Is there anybody else on the list that – Anybody actually uh, thinks? I mean, I think I I think EJ wins it, no problem. A little yeah. surprise. Oh, yeah, uh, you guys are all right-handedness. I think, <laughs> I think Packy deserves a shout out for being the Packy only does. other multiple-time, two-time yeah. champ, other than EJ. Right. If I, I think that's correct. Uh, I just was gonna EJ, shout uh, out. AJ had three. Yeah, just shout but, out. Packy. Uh, oh, shout. Well, just shout out. So yes, you got uh, Packy with two. two um, so well, I was gonna say butter for Packy. I mean, I don't. To left is lefty. so much harder. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Um, and I, no, I say that loud, say that everywhere. <laughs> I loud and proud, baby. The left is always hard, you know. Left you sucks. righties, left all, sucks. You, all you righties got to do is move left, all right. We gotta, you know, uh-huh. we gotta look past five sometimes. I, I watched like you six throw or seven. it, we I watched you throw it. Five it's that nosebleed area for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you watched me throw it in Massachusetts. I, I saw what that ball was doing. What, Spray and pray. yeah, dude. I had, uh, uh, what do you want me to tell you? When you Five, match up, you match boards. up. I don't know. That's what I want you to tell me. Listen, I bowled with Andrew when we bowled in the round of whatever it was with the two 19-year-olds. I was the old man in the group. Yeah. And uh, listen, we all threw purple. And when I faced the guy in the finals, they, he threw purple. When I faced Andrew, he threw purple. I mean, all the young guns knew what was going on. I Did mean, you throw purple, Kyle? Uh, no, I tried, and it went left. But I did not get oh, in where you were. I think it's supposed to. Go uh, left, but you've right? got more hand than I do. So well, I, yeah. I, I try reactive to start on that pair what, that we bowled the, the four for two. And Ooh. just like four for two. I like that. Yeah, the four for two. I like that. Four like for it, two. Little yeah. Wendy special. <laughs> and, yeah, no, no, four for two. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're like Wendy's brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so literally, that's exactly it. <laughs> Holy crap. It's Bake, all come a full Bake, circle. Baconator one time. So we allowed to Baconator right on right the pretzel bun now. You see that? Really? Yes. And I think I used to just modify. They're loaded. They're loaded. It's crazy. Nacho, uh, it's crazy. What was I just talking about? I lost my four for two. Uh, four, four for two. Four for two. Either way, yeah. So I tried to throw reactive in that pair. It did wiggle. And I was like, oh, that well, didn't I, look good. And you're like, yeah, that wasn't. No, yeah, I light mixed the first shot. And then I got the other one a little slower to the right. Maybe turn over a little sooner at 2810. I said, absolutely not. This is not working. So I switched to the purple again. And there you go. Yeah, it was Bob's magic. I mean, it was just, yeah. Did you say Bob's my uncle? Bob's your uncle. You ever heard that one? There's no way that there's no way you haven't heard it. No, that's a New Englander thing, I guess. I mean, you heard that, that Kyle? T- nope. That's a New Englander thing, buddy. <laughs> I think you guys just live in I think you guys just live under a rock here in the capital. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty I common do live one. under a rock. <laughs> I mean, I love that. I mean, we are underneath the yeah, I, home, I definitely so. did not try Beautiful. purple left of the track. So I but I saw that's where you were playing with it, and I'm like that looks pretty darn good. I probably should use it there, but I was too scared to even try. Cause... But like, it's just such a weird, it's awkward because urethane's not really supposed, like traditional urethane's right. not supposed to do that. So when you, like, I get uncomfortable swinging the fronts a lot with purple, with purple right. hammer or any urethane ball because I don't know what it's going to do in the last 30 right. feet if I don't get it to the right fast enough where the friction's at. Yeah. It has to hook at 25 feet before that. If not, yeah. that ball's never hooking. You know right. what it's going to do. It's going to strike, baby. It's going to strike. Whatever it is, I got it. Come on. I no clue. <laughs> You don't need do to know a purple. You That's don't true. need to know a purple. It's purple. You just trust purple. I think I'll take your strategy and uh, just um, wheel. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing. I was just, you know, I was just lining up and feeling Serve it. it up. Yeah, it was. But that's what you need. Like, that is such, that's like the hot hand in basketball. You're just feeling it. That's all it is. I am, yeah. Maybe Kyle not a you. proven scientific theory. But not at all. It is. Uh... He looks at three and prays. No, I literally looked at three. <laughs> that entire tournament, I looked at three. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When you texted me after you threw, <laughs> I didn't look at the scores. He texted me. I said, "Did I win? Did I win?" I because <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing because copping the guy after me. He yeah. didn't shake my hand or anything. He was like, "Good bowling," and I was like, "Thanks." I was like, "Did I win?" Yeah, <laughs> I thought I was know. right there, and I didn't look up the score because I was like, ah, "I'm gonna pee myself." So yeah, I, in my head, I was like, "God, how does this guy not know the score?" And I didn't know the match against us either. And, and, and I told you that. And Haley was like, "Maybe you should learn a lesson from that. Maybe you should take some notes because he's 20 grand <laughs> richer than you." I was like, "She's got a point. She's got a, she's got a point there." Well, we all need an Anthony Scatia lobotomy. So Everybody so hates we, me because I, also, I just I, I don't know. I try not to think about score till after the first shot of intent. 
Beanie Man is freaking a winner, Pizza Wings. You freaking calm down. Um, all right. So if we uh, if we all agree to narrow it down to EJ Tackett and, and Simo, uh, obviously EJ's got five wins. Simo's got two wins. But the big argument that I've been hearing is that Simo like cash. Well, it's actually it's top ten somewhere. But yeah, he top ten. Not, actually, yeah, event. I shouldn't say cash, but he like he top, top ten like, every every event. freaking time. And then uh, does that? Does that take the cake over five wins and like all of the money, uh, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is like a twenty fifth or thirtieth place finish on the golf course? What's the di- Kyle, come what's on. the uh, on the G course on the G course? What's the difference between Simo's earnings this year and Tackett's? Uh, you can't was, look at that because it said Belmo's earnings were four hundred fifty thousand. Doesn't it say it uh, says yeah, Belmo was uh, like four fifty, right? Yeah, EJ is four hundred and fifty, four hundred and fifty eight, and Simo is three hundred and fifty four. What was uh Belmo? Three hundred and forty seven, excuse me. What was Belmo? Somebody told me it was four hundred. No way. Dad, that's, that's what not I said. Possible. That's I'm what so I said. There's Hang a on. way that he yeah, that's not that. Del Monte. Holy crap, three hundred and thirty eight yeah. thousand. Three thirty eight. Yeah. But where? Maybe, they counting, maybe, are they counting brackets? Uh, he, He's just brackets for the side action. <laughs> Go see Tom Clark in the desk for side are there, there are no brackets, right? No. Okay, so the USBC no. Masters brackets. Uh, but they have bottom half brackets the last day. Yeah, but then you can you can do brackets the whole time, can't you? Maybe. I think you do it the whole time. He did win TOC, so what was that, $50,000 this year? And he yeah, also finished third in like every other event. Or, or was that $100,000 this year? I don't remember. Listen, we... anyway. I don't know. I bowl for titles, not top tens. That's what Tyler Drexel told me. <laughs> bowl for titles. Well, well no, I think he just meant that in general, but I'm going to take that for myself. Um, right. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. I'm going what's to go tack- with a guy with a thumb in it. What's Ooh. what's Tackett's uh, average just, finish? You know, I think Simon was good, but I just think I don't know. He Tackett had, led an average too. He came in like he came in last good the amount, week after. He, he did. Won, I know I he won. Know. He came in. You know, he's riding a high. Yeah. I don't, he's a hundred grand that, richer. That was the talk of the yeah, town. No. I mean, you got to think about it. He doesn't really need the 20 at that point. And then he goes and wins the next one for like another hundred. And it's like, well, I really can tank the he next let, one. He led points. He led earnings. He led average. 227 was his average. But did, That's like my league average. Like what, what categories did he not lead? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah, two majors. It's got to be average. The only thing Simo has on him has got to be average, average finish, finish position. Average he was, finishing. He was number one seed in four out of the five uh, That's gross. majors. That's gross. I mean, it's hard not to pick EJ Tag. It really hard. It's really hard not to. I when mean, he did lead. He led by quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna give it to EJ because he took most of the most of the wins. You know, uh, everybody has a bad block. Um, Simo, I guess you know. Top ten, that's good, but uh, nobody counts how close you were in horseshoes. Horseshoes and hand grenades. That's the only time it counts when it's yeah. Whatever close. I just said, I didn't say it right. But <laughs> Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. Bob's. Um, but no, I just think uh, you know, winning is uh, winning. Winning is is it. You know, so winning isn't everything. It's it's the only thing. Vince Lombardi. I'm gonna have to agree with that oh, one. EJ. I'm gonna have to EJ. agree with that one. EJ, I'm going EJ. I'm EJ. Yeah. All right, EJ's across the board. That's I mean, interesting. Like you said, tough to beat. It is definitely a tough to beat. I mean, if I just won 100k and then I had to go bowl the next day, I don't really think I'd. I'd be like, dude, I might as well withdraw. Like I'm good. Bowlers bowl, Anthony. Bowlers bowl. That is a true statement. But I, don't I mean, know if it's that tough of a debate though, he led so many things this year. Statistically wise, he is the best bowler. I mean, I just personally by, don't by think far. there's any debate to it. Well, I mean, top I mean, 10 in every every event. He bowled every event. I'm sure he's watched. I mean, yeah, but to Simon pull out should, top 10 against Simon everybody every time. There, it's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, but still, I mean, you're still bowling the greatest players in the world. You're telling me that some guy can't get hot and the top 10 can't be super hot? I mean, true. You know? True. I mean, simo has got to play every part of the lane. To be top 10 at that level is... You've got to be great. I think if the season was longer and he kept up that same energy, probably would have won. Yes, he would have won Player of the Year because that's ridiculous. I disagree. Yeah. I think if the racks were better, that uh, he would have played. Don't, don't he would have won Player of the Year. Don't go to any blur- don't, don't, people don't. complain about the racks, <laughs> dude. It's a it's a Simo go to. Oh yeah, that's right. I see where you're, I see where you went with that. Avoid Bolero, Southern Connecticut. <laughs> No, I don't know. I, I really think that, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying if they went on for the whole year, but who knows? Maybe EJ stays hot bowling for the whole year. 
I'm sure that's second nature. So it, I mean, you don't know. I mean, you, you don't know don't what would happen. But... His, his game is just so stupid too. It's like I don't, not in a bad way. Just like stupid good. Then it just thinks outside the box all the time. He does things that no one really else will do. Like he's he's starting the backup ball thing to make everyone utilize that instead of just having to watch everyone on the other side being like, wow, I wish I had that. Left's do, good. Guy has you, that. Yeah. Left's so good. on the stuff that we don't see, like because uh, well. For most people that aren't watching on the stream uh, most of the day, uh, are there things that you know he's using that you know what are, what are they usually using shocks or? Uh, um, yeah, I mean the main balls. So tox or um, what's that new one? For that primal shock, they yeah. used a bunch. Jackal ghosts they use a lot. Um, I didn't watch that many shots go down the lane obviously those balls went went down though um, i'm trying to think of some one-offs that i saw some ambushes here and there jackal ambushes like seen that yellow thing yeah the the yeah, the, the yellow yellow jacket yellow jacket, yeah, yellow tank, jacket yeah. tank yeah it looks cool ej threw it's a supposed pride, to be a pride urethane pride type of thing there. right yeah yeah again another spinoff that kind of flopped didn't it the pride empire the yeah. green one yeah i think it might have i think it did I just don't, to be honest, I don't see a, a whole lot of motive balls going down the lane anyway. It's just recently with the whole acquisition and everything, it's always Brunswick and Storm. And not to put that out there in the open, but it seems like majorly those are the brands that I'm seeing on the yeah. lanes, except for EJ and uh, AJ when they throw them. So. Yeah. Don't, don't forget, forget about, about THB. Oh, oh, my God. Dickie. Yeah. Dick Allen. Of course. <laughs> it's our boy, THB. Uh, Santu. Santu also does do that. Santu. Yeah. I'm he, sure I'm missing a couple guys. I, I think that's it. Those four. four. Grand Fock. On the... Grand Fock? Grand Fock. <laughs> Is he motive? I don't know. I thought Grand Fock was Brunswick. I was like Grand Fock. He's no, he's handed. Brunswick. He throws a purple. He's Brunswick. He's he was handed. motive a while ago. Okay. Like, I got to get up to date. I got to like read the... I got to read a book or something. I got to get up to date. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you just got to... You no, just got to... You just got to focus on the PTQ, baby. You don't got to worry about no books. Just gotta be a, be a warrior this year, man. Got to put on the helmet and go. <laughs> put on, put the, on helmet. the helmet, exactly. Tartan and, helmet or Spartan Andrew helmet. Andrew Anderson. Oh yeah, Andrew Anderson. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, him. he signed. Nathan Bohr. Oh, and now Sam Cooley signed with Motive too. That's that's right. right. We Sean were just talking about that. Sean. Wow. See, I'm lacking. There's so many Wesley guys. Wesley Lowe, Zach Tack, right. yeah, million guys. Smallwood. That's interesting. I completely forgot that they had all those. Smallwood. Guys. Ah. Zeke Bate. Um, Jacob Smith, interesting comment. I th almost think, I think the opposite. I think his ball, his ball reaction is good now to the where, because the motive balls to me are a little bit tamer. His increased rev rate sees a lot of predictability with those balls. I agree. Like I think motive benefits him in that regard. I think if he tried to throw other brands like an HK22 ball or a Storm Shiny ball, wow. I'm, I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'd love to see it. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I just think that motive benefits him pretty well. Good thought, though. Nine for pin. Sure. Nah, nine pin <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I think that's a excellent thought because uh, they do seem a lot tamer going through the yeah the down the end of the lane. It's not so snappy. Hook, it just increases to, his hook window, so yeah. he just has more predictability when having that kind of rev rate. It's, it's tough to find that. So, so ridiculous. That's why man. Svensson throws your thing. All of the time. I mean, yeah. One hundred percent of the time. Except for the time of the Masters when he destroyed the lane on me. <laughs> this game I shot one hundred forty-five. I mean, if I had close that's to five fifty, I'd probably throw urethane all the time too. That, like that's one thing too. I, I learned coming out is the couple of main fields I did make. Is, Whoa! It is like it is so dependent on who you follow. If your rev rate is on the lower side, like minus, it's like going you know, like four twenty four, like between four twenty and four forty. I'd say. I've never had to pay attention to a cross really that much until I got to the national tour. Granted, I should have beforehand. I think that was where I should have. Yeah. But finding out you. this year, wow. Like, Following wow, Dick wow, Allen wow, to wow. EJ Tackett is a little different. Yes, very much so. Let's just say I'd rather follow one than the other. <laughs> um, so let's talk about tour life real quick. And before we do... Like, subscribe, click the bell to get alerts from the channel. I've got a shirt idea. It's the helmet. Um, Bowlers bowl with a helmet. Helmet. Okay. Uh, right. If you can't watch on YouTube, uh, you can always download and listen on your favorite podcast service. And when you're doing that, give us a five-star review. Um, 
And what else? Oh, go to the Etsy shop. Check out the merch where you can get that new T-shirt. Etsy shop. Yeah, man. Yo, I'll, I gotta, I gotta find something. I gotta <laughs> check that out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy some merch. Heck yeah, we got a, we got a Thane Bang shirt. Thane Bang, Bang. shirt. Yeah, put it on. And we got a it. Bowlers Bowl shirt. Um, and we got a downline podcast shirt. We got everything. Everything and you need is in the shop. Anthony has a new idea. Yeah, so. I got a few stirred yeah. up here. I just He's got as many ideas that I have shirts in the shop. So I do. <laughs> I just can't figure out how to put them on a piece of computer yeah, paper. Yeah, whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, do all that good stuff. And share with your friends, too, guys. If you like the show, share with your friends. All right, let's talk about the, the Life on Tour here. Um, you're talking about uh, following guys in squads. What is the big difference that you see from going to the PTQ to go into the main field, um, like, do you even remember? Like, do you just put the PTQ at? Well, it's a completely different shot now, right? So, okay, so I guess forget about that. No, question no, no, because it, they they did start it changing the shot. No, it applies. So, like, even though the patterns are different, the, the actual process of adjustments are a little bit different. So, because there's a, I would say there's a little bit more rev rate in a more of a consistent place in the main fields because everyone's playing them a little bit closer to the same. So that's that one part of the lane will break down a little bit faster than they would in the PTQ. The the uh, PTQ bowlers, it's a much bigger field, and there's some more um, average shows. Yeah, like you could say that maybe. So they're gonna they're gonna play everywhere. Maybe. Yeah, maybe <laughs> they're gonna play everywhere. So it's gonna be harder to find a definitive track to follow throughout a block as opposed to the tour where you have everyone, like I said, playing in the same spot. It's just a little bit easier to follow the moves and. Um, where I had some success at a regular event in Kokomo, it's kind of what I saw. Like you just, it's just, you move so much faster because of all that friction right. that's created quicker. It's so it's, you, you just you can't teach it. You can't teach it. You got to go out gotta there and you got to bowl. You got to go out there and you got to fail yourself. a couple of times. And bowlers bowl. Bowlers bowl. <laughs> and it changes and it changes your trajectory in the front. I mean, I won't, I won't, you know, give away too many trade secrets, but basically like the farther, le- like, they they don't move their eyes left really that much. They just move their free feet and they get their ball to the same spot down the lane. So as time goes on, their angles get so steep in the front, so left to right. So that that and that's where you find all the ratio on, on on a flat pattern. That's why it makes it seem like they have a lot of room, even though it's still very difficult. So mm. it's just the way that they attack the lane is something that I've never seen on site on hand before yeah before then so that was my biggest takeaway do you think that has a lot to do with lane play versus you know they are using different lane machines different oils um or is it because of lane play it's a part of it no i mean um so the season started off majorly we used a brunswick machine i'm pretty sure it was an envoy i'm not positive i think that was the one uh but midway through the season i'd say the back like three quarters the players Starting at Carolier, we used a flex machine. And the main difference was we I noticed more friction throughout the lane. Like the whole it seemed like more cliffed with the Brunswick machines just because they own they're only capable of doing the forward pass. They don't do a reverse load. Right. Admittedly, I don't know the exact reason. I just felt I felt like there was more friction throughout the entire lane with the flex machine. Um on your bag, 50, 50 seconds. Sorry, that caught me off guard. <laughs> there was just, and there was a lot of chatter too about when they changed the machines and how the transitions were different. You just have to get steeper, faster. Why did they change the machines? Because I thought on the They're tour lane, they only do the or the did Brunswick, it break down. Yeah, the Brunswick uh, lane guy had to take a leave of absence for a little while. So oh, he, so, oh, it was, so that time. it was it was an emergency okay. fill in. Yeah, gotcha. they, they're, they're still contracted with Brunswick to do the lanes, but um, yeah. So the uh, Brunswick machine, I find myself having to get steeper a little bit faster because I have to get my ball to the dry because they're, they're, right. they're, they play slicker for me. Mm. And, and another aspect without drawing it out is that the oil heats up on the Brunswick machine. So people think people, AKA Simo kind of explained this. He thinks that as the oil heats up, it starts off hot. So y- your ball shoots. And then once it gets colder, your ball like slows down in a way. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an interesting theory that they came up with. But the Brunswick machine is vastly different from a Kegel machine if you've ever bowled on one. Interesting. Plain, I have plain heard and simple. That. Plain Peter and Fox. Simple. Peter Fox. A, I mean Pierre Fox. Uh, <laughs> Peter has. We have chatted quite a few times because yeah. I I like Peter. He's a nice guy. He's one of our roommates. Oh yeah, he's a great he's guy. Yeah. And uh, he, we talk about that quite often. Now, obviously, I'm not out there, but he, you know, I ask him questions how he's yeah. doing and what how he's you know, adjusting his up. And he tells me that his tilt is more important on one machine versus the next machine and that he can play him this way. Like he's too smart for his own good. Sometimes dude, he's like way here. And I'm like, yeah. Whoa, man, listen, if that's, if that's you, that's you good for him. 
Uh, but yeah, he's he's in depth about it, man. He's 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 about it. So knows what he's doing. Yeah. Sure. So you telling me that doesn't surprise me because he's. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think he did say that the Brunswick machines play tighter versus the the Kaggle ones. Um, they do. It's like your ball. It's it's weird. It's like your ball struggles to slow down. It's odd. Like it struggles to read the lane in that in that spot. That's kind of my kind of pattern. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> been telling you to go on tour there. No, but come on now. No, you walked into no, that. No, come on. No. You gotta do it. No, I like my flex machine here. It's good. It gives me plenty of hook. I like a flex machine too, boss. I like being able to miss in a little bit and have my ball still get up the hill. Love it. That's my favorite thing to see. Well, I mean, I guess it does make sense, right? The reverse is kind of what holds up the pattern and and I guess maybe gives yeah. you a little bit of yeah. uh, slowdown in the pattern too, I, I suppose. I guess it would also oh. blend the pattern, mm -hmm. I would think, on the back pass for Kegel because you said the Brunswick is more cliffy. Correct. Correct. Okay, yes. so that maybe I could see that too. That's interesting. Interesting thoughts. I haven't heard that one before, but that's yeah. that's interesting. It just make it. It also makes sense to me just because of all the rev right in one place for the Brunswick machine to play someone. They must. They, they must blow up a lot faster too. I would say. Oh yeah, they do. I have to use. Um, I hardly threw symmetrical balls when I bowled. When when I had success out there when I was bowling well, I was mainly throwing, like my most used balls was probably an exotic gem, a gem like just the big balls, eternity like like strong balls hmm. and a pitch black. I threw. A, Phase it's two, back. I threw a phase two in Kokomo for a little bit. But other than that, I really didn't have a lot of success with symmetrical balls there because I just had to get so steep in the front. I needed the help with the asymmetry to get it around the corner mm. if I missed left to get up the hill. Right. All right. So let's talk about a little more life then. So you're doing PTQs, which I assume the your roommates are doing PTQs yep. also. So if somebody makes the, the main field. We're cheerleaders. If we don't make it, we're cheerleaders. Uh, so you stay... That, well, and then if nobody makes it, you're just on the. Yeah, it's kind of up road. to us. I mean, I I personally like to stay and watch a little bit. I okay. like to see how they Get a little bit know. of visual training. Yeah, you're still learning. I like apart from last year, try to apply more knowledge. Like for this year, I'm probably going to try to watch more than I did last year, um, just to see the the full course of an adjustment. Still, we're all learning always yeah. constantly. But um, yeah, it's just kind of. I lost my train of thought. What were you just saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> PTQ versus making the main field. Uh, yeah. So like, yeah, there are different adjustments as well as resting in between stops. Like you have so much spare time. If you miss the PTQ, like finding what to do with your spare time is kind of a big challenge too. Especially like, from week to week. Also watching week to week, like booking hotels in a way is difficult because you don't know if you're going to be there for a week right. or a few days. It's tough to book out in advance. Like I have a few ready to go, but I've, I've got to book like eight or nine more <laughs> yeah. just because I, I don't really know what the schedule is going to be. Um, but if obviously one of our roommates is in there, we're going to be watching him, supporting him. Um, if none of us make it, we're going to practice. We're going to hang out for a little while. Where practice do you practice? More. We usually go to a place with surrounding centers. They don't let us bowl at the center. Really. That's what I was going to say. Are yeah. you able to get into the center? Is it? So, with, you know, I think if you're practicing in the center, beforehand you have to be in bowling attire and it can't be during the week okay don't quote me but no but that's sure just that kind that's, of that's like the rule. yeah so like we always go to different centers to practice than the main, the main place yeah it's weird it's a weird setup but uh yeah, yeah i mean so i would assume it's very weird very weird when you're there I so just go, i just can't go up and bowl yeah. can i go practice because i'm trying to learn how to play this pattern better or i'll just bowl in the remnants because yeah i'd like you, to just see you yeah you can Rules are a little different now. Guys with ball action afterward, bowl for all our money. Like, uh, who that's is where it? they're making the money. Who is it? So I heard like, it's actually on a beef with Barnsley. They were talking about Harry Sullins and um, someone else. They would just bowl for their prize money every week. They would just bowl action. Like they were roommates, but like they just bowled for their money every week because it's such a grind. Like wow. it's, it's so. There's some relationships and roommates like that. I don't typically go for that. I like the I like to have a good system around you. So when you are having some success, you got some faces there. Yeah, cheering you on. Right, it's good. Um, but yeah, you don't want them hoping that you're gonna win just so that they can steal your yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, 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 right. They can do that too. Hmm. But like I said, man, finding what to do with your time is kind of the big part of it. So like, like working out practicing exercise yeah. make, watching doing everything doing everything you can to do better the next week it's like it's not always chilling free time well, obviously you want to be bowling <laughs> the whole time no kidding but yeah. when you're not it's that yeah when we were talking about this with aj last week dude when we went to the masters we we're like 
What do we do? We've got 12 hours until we have the bowl. What are we going to do all day? Yep. And And then it was the last. Then you have like your bowl A squad day one. Then you're like bowling C squad day two. And you have like 24 hours, hours, whatever it was. 36 hours. Yeah. Yeah. 36 hours before you have to bowl again. And it's like, dude, this is too much time. I felt that first when I bowled team trials for the first time when they alternate men and women start in the morning, bowl in the morning, and we don't bowl till the afternoon the next day. And I'm just like, it's what crazy. Do do? What yeah. do you do? Exactly. Um, silence. So you mentioned uh, uh, working out. Do you do a lot of uh, exercise and yeah, fitness? Mo- most lower body and core stuff. Like, I, I don't want to get super big up top here. I'm going to start doing wrist stuff. Anthony, like, he's been helping me out with. I've been having some knots in the arm here. But Anthony's been good giving old... me some good old rub downs. We'll leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> I'm milking his arm real he's good. It real nice. He's been milking it. But that's actually the only reason why I'm bowling league tonight. Anthony, I, I didn't know you were into redheads. Oh, he's into it. He's into redheads and <laughs> red arms, too. He likes them both. I like the red stuff. He likes the red stuff. But, oh, geez. But, yeah, so mostly it's like low, it's lower body stuff, um, core, back. I don't want to get super big up here just because yeah. I don't want to lose any flexibility. Mm-hmm. I could certainly benefit maybe. It's more so learning how to apply some upper body uh, fitness to me. I have like some apprehension toward it, but it's all lower body. And, like, yeah. Dude, really curls for sure the I girls. Hmm? Dude, curls for the girls. Curls for the girls. I need curls for the pins. I don't need that right now. I need curls for the pins. <laughs> okay, you got to explain to me what is mop here because I have I have an understanding of what it is, but I'm L- not sure. Lich lingo. It's from it's from it's Neba language. It's well not Neba specifically, uh, but it's New England era. Like, mop area. stands mop for plus. no, it's just a mop. It's like, bro. I thought it stood for man of power. <laughs> I was trying to think of things that mop would be. So just no, mop is power, just. just yo, like You're a mop. Yo, mop. Okay. I just, bro, I just like accepted it. I didn't. Even no, know. I'm okay with it. I just. Like, chief, like Chief's a new one. That's that's not really that. But it's like mop and hoss are the two big ones. Lich lingo. Lich lingo. Mike Lichstein. You ever, you ever heard of oh. him? Larry Lichstein? Yeah. Yeah, Mike, yeah. yeah, Mike and Larry. Those yes. Guys. Great Shout guys. out Lichsteins. They're the they're the goats. Some of the goats of bowling, but yeah, it's very simple. No need to overthink it. It's just bro, a mop. bowling bro, sub hoss mop. Top. I mean, it's easy for you to be a mop. You got the mop top. Yeah, well, that's what everyone initially thought it was. So I had to. I spent some non-comedic time trying to explain it, and everyone's like, "This isn't funny." I'm like, "I know it's not funny because you're questioning it. I gotta explain it." Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's funny. why I'd ask. Nice. Why I'd ask. You call me Mop all the time. I'm like, I'm just yeah. not sure what Mop is, uh, but yeah. What's your uh, go-to meal on the when you're out there? AJ had a hard the, time with this one too. It's last funny. Week. It's funny. I actually thought of a question that I'm gonna ask you guys later on to end the end the podcast really quick. It might take time for me. Chipotle, man, just a mm. nice little chicken bowl with some rice. Chipotle. Like it's huh. just such a staple in my diet. We might not have enough time, but my question I was going to ask for you guys: if if you could eat at one restaurant for the rest of your life, you can't do it any other way. Which one are you doing? I know what I'm picking. Really? What are you going to pick? Applebee's. Oh, wow! They have quite the variety of things. So, are you, is true. is money a problem? No, or? you know, you just whatever. I mean, like, what did you just say? Is money a problem? Like, I want to know how expensive I. Can oh, go. Like, I, I mean, you're asking him if money was a problem. I mean, he's like, eating no, at Applebee's I mean, for the rest saying, of his no, life. I mean, I'm not saying you have bottomless pockets. But <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. I was just, but I want to know, like, is there like a like Morton's every meal for my life? <laughs> I mean. Like, I'm if that's an option. That. Steakhouse, just, for those who don't know. Yeah. I mean, are we choosing like a normal, like whatever you want? Baby. I'm a, I'm gonna sit down guy. I'm probably just gonna choose an Italian place. Mm. There you go. Um, of some sort. Um, I, it just it, chain. I'm not gonna pick chain. There's no good real Italian chains. I don't oh, think. Man. Anthony goes to Olive Garden like every week. No, <laughs> gotta be careful. Obviously, you cook your own food, whatever. But the restaurants. I know the restaurants. The restaurants. Yeah. That's a tough one. I'm gonna have to think bad about that, that. The first thing that came to my mind was Five Guys. No, <laughs> no, they make a good burger over there, bro. That's that's yesterday. good. You would be enormous. I know. I'm already <laughs> enormous, but um, yes, that would be super enormous. So hard to pick. I mean, I don't even know. I, I mean. I don't know. I'd have to think about I've never this. seen your gears grind this hard, bro. They never move like, that fast. Never. I mean, I'm going a mile an hour. It's freaking <laughs> if, quick. Uh, if it has chicken and pasta, he'd be good. Yeah, so, I mean, that's all I need. Stable. I could eat. I could eat chicken every day. I could eat pasta every day. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think. All right, about yeah, it. yeah. Ah. Answer for the next podcast. Oh don't my like, goodness! No, You're no, it's not gonna be that too. long. I just gotta think of an Italian <laughs> place. I mean, I mean, I could pick a place here, but like, you know. 
All right, last Dominoes. last uh, last question. What's your favorite Dominoes. place uh, bowling wise on tour? Saber Bowling Center. Yeah. Oh, or tour, just favorite tour. location. Um, or it doesn't have to be on tour, but it just be favorite bowling center that you been to see lance what's going Kokomo. on made my first cut there oh there <laughs> like you go Kokomo. <laughs> Kokomo's pretty good no I, I i visited um the uh bowling center the thunderbolt arena bay center there right that like the 20 lanes that's yep. a, that is a really cool place. that is so cool that's, that's a close second bias kokomo close second is the thunderbolt arena never yeah. been there and that's a really cool spot that is really cool yeah, yeah. Ho- hope i get to bowl for store in there one day. Pretty <laughs> right cool. be pretty cool that Are you cool. uh, you see a lot of difference with the um, the lanes out there, in terms of lane beds? You hear guys talking about it. Is it a hot topic? Is it so, not a topic? Oh, it's very much a topic. The fronts hook everywhere we go. It seems, and yeah, a lot the of fronts head. are a prob- lot of head, a lot of head everywhere we go. It seems like, <laughs> and it's it's funny because I don't seem to. I feel like I don't see it as much <laughs> because my uh, my rev rate's lower, so they all see the fronts way way more than me. Okay. And it seems like for me, my ball seems like it gets through it fine because they use like 34 mil, pa- like 30 plus unit patterns with a Brunswick machine. So I feel like my ball is getting through it just fine. But everyone's like, God, my ball is just hooking the second I put it down. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm almost concerned. I'm like, what am I missing here? Like, when is yeah. my ball reaction going to shit? It did for a while, a couple times. Hmm. But once I figured out that they're all getting super left fast because the front suck, like I thought I 10 pin because my, my ball wasn't hooking. I 10 pin because my ball is burning up. Yeah, I could see like that. long story short. So like when your ball burns up, you move in. Yeah, it doesn't hook, you move right. But it's such a misconception that yeah. you, when you 10 pin, it didn't hook that you move right. And then it's just more of the same problem. Right. right Are you right. ever going to the right? So. Or is it like, no, hey, I'm in the wrong part of the lane. I'm just going to go left. It's now. always left. It's literally always mm-hmm. left like, on the on the national tour and then regional side. The regional, is that the same? Yeah. Sorry, not to cut you. No, off. you're good. I'm just asking because we've talked to a few guys and it seems you know left right what what are the biggest differences between regional and national but um it's so it's interesting i think it's the patterns themselves because they obviously the regional and the national they use the same ones but you can get away with making steeper moves on the pba patterns because they're designed similarly like if you look at them all back to back to back they all have a run like a pretty distinct runway right around 10 like it's give or take a few boards here and there like taper down the lane but they're all fairly similarly shaped so they let you get across away, uh, get across the fronts steep, to where five is always going to hook because you start there, more mainly, or they yeah. all do. Don't yep. give away too many secrets here. Uh, just, you know, I'm, you know, like I, I think that everyone, like I have a different view. Like if you have a decent physical game, you can go on tour and compete. Are you going to beat the best in the world? That's a completely different animal. But to to strike a little bit, it's totally attainable it's just it's knowledge it's just knowing what to what the moves are and if you're in the is. right part of the lane totally. using the right equipment totally. and making the right moves totally. you can be close absolutely you can be close i'm not saying you're gonna win you're gonna top five every week but you can not Give it a run yeah it a you, run. you can not waste your time right so you would run when you're on the re- regional tour the regional tour the regional tour the <laughs> ring tour when you're on the regional tour you have any different uh strategies starting wise moving adjustments stuff like that or is it or is it fairly similar to the national tour? So it, I think my, I, um, let me think about this. I approach them a little bit closer to a amateur event just because a lot of the same bowlers that bowl those events bowl the regionals. Now, because the patterns are designed a certain way, I'm able to move a little left faster than, say, like a kegel pattern, whatever we just bowled on. Like right. I kind of had to inch my way, but I, I'm able to get steep kind of at my own pace on the regional tour because my rev rate is more in the middle to high like you're more mi- high like middle assume. like in the region so that lets me get left more so at my own pace okay it, but it's been quicker though it's been quicker though recently yeah like, it's i've noticed that too i mean i don't play the right side of lane yeah no, except I, when i was at east providence i tried the right side it was better than the i left. mean i'm moving it's it's tough to say like consistently per game i move no there's no like, consistent but you know I'm you're moving, moving multiple left. zones throughout the block yeah like yeah. pretty quick and my yeah. eyes aren't moving that much either like i don't make two and ones a little quick one like mm-hmm. i make two and o's or four and ones just because i try to keep my ball to the right so i can it create that friction yeah so i lane. can create it's just how i see the lane and it's all what i learned on tour this year i played yeah. them completely different when I, before i went to tour so, yeah, I, I would say from bowling a few events, not like, a, and I watched the righties 
because I have to observe the righties. I can't watch the lefties. <laughs> so all I do is throw a purple it's, hammer. It's <laughs> difficult. Well, the righties are typically, they get pretty steep quickly. Me and Kyle have that because obviously I have friends who bowl the regional tour. So it's, yeah. you know, oh, what did I do? And I'm like, I just don't think you did this. And for me, at least watching. And then I got to bowl with Bill O'Neill. Oh. You guys, you guys would make fun of me again. Oh, um, and him plug it himself. <laughs> uh, you, we got to both him. So I did ask him the same questions. So it was very similar. Um, but he, he says he likes to stay left in the beginning because he doesn't run into the, the traffic and he can find the friction because the lane beds, 90% of the centers that we bowl in are, oh, are, are older. So sure. you're able to be a little more left. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of an interesting, interesting I, little thing to add to that. I, after game two, I'm moving significantly faster. Game, like the first pair, I like to play a little straighter as far as like because Bill's right. For sure. Obviously, fun. he's fantastic. Like you want to stay as left as you can, get away from that. That's yeah, where all the that's what he said. He stays as left to get away from the the traffic. Exactly. A little more, and then he actually says he inches right on the regional tour. Oh, does he? Well, really? um, yes, on the national tour he goes left. Goes left. There is no right on the national yeah. tour. That's interesting. It's all left. So I just wanted to see what your take yeah, was. Definitely see. no right on the national tour. And I have I don't often move right at all either. Like unless I'm making a really big zone change where I'm totally switching up my strategy, it's really not I'm not creeping to the right. Interesting. Interesting yeah. thoughts. Norm Duke used to. That's all I gotta say. Dude. Sorry to keep us long. That's, that's, that's just a uh that's just an anomaly though. He's just Norm's great. Norm. Yeah. Norm's the man. Always, um, all right. Well, it is time for us to go bowling. All four of us need to go bowling. So don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell to get alerts from the channel. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks, thanks it was so a pleasure. Me, man. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Mop. Thank you, Hoss. <laughs> Hoss. All right, Chief. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go to uh, uh, I'm going to go to either Marissa's or Cafe Calabria. All right. Like right now? No, that was. Oh, oh, restaurant. that's your. Uh, I'll choose a local. Ooh, chain. This is good. Uh, both of them are very. And good. Catholic uh, Library is pretty good, good too. Like so it. I'll take either or. Okay. Okay. I'd be happy with both. Thank you. Suffice. I like it. Um. All right. So uh, let's see here. Like, subscribe, click the bell to get alerts from the channel. If you can't watch on YouTube, you can always download and listen on your favorite podcast outlet. And while you're doing that, give us a five star review and share with your friends because. Uh, we want them to hear too. We love friends. Bowling community. We That's like right. a community. And bowlers bowl, man. Bowlers, bowlers bowl. Check bowlers, out that bowl. Etsy shop for those shirts and apparel. Um, and let's see what else we got. I said Etsy shop. Uh, I don't know. Thank you to Jack Skation, proprietor of Town and Country Lanes. Thank you to Austin Van Buren. Another great show. Bam. Anthony, good show. All right. Thank you to my family, Stephanie, Zach, and Ethan. Jen Bradford. We will see you guys next week. This is Downlane Podcast.